this is probably the only setting in which this question is appropriate. But when you got the job, did you measure your hands? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I measured them against dinner plates. My okay. wife was like, I just washed that. I just <laughs> emptied the dishwasher. Please stop putting your grubby fingerprints on our plates. And I had I had to know. I had to know. And yes, they are. You can eat off these. If, the size of dinner plates. Yeah. If you're ever out a plate or two at a Christmas dinner, I'll I'll come uh, help you out. Perfect. Wonderful. Um, well, I'm curious. I mean, this is such a great opportunity. What's the origin story of this for you? How did this kind of first uh, come across your radar? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, they came to me and, um, you know, I did, you know, I, I entertained it. I, you know, I had so many other offers. I was like, I don't know. I'll think about it, guys. Um, reach or who? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm kidding. They did come to me. That's true. Um, and I w was clamoring for a shot at this. Uh, I, uh, I was passed on the first round, like everybody was, um, this was a tough one to find, but you know, to, to, to my defense, um, the scenes were very different and what we were, we were auditioning with an interrogation scene where Reacher doesn't say anything. So very tough to play, uh, Reacher saying nothing. Um, so it was, uh, it was tricky. And then, you know, we got a new casting director on board, a couple of new scenes, and uh, the process, it heated up um, and became very competitive. And, you know, it was uh, maybe six or seven months, I think, um, from that point on. Uh, so it was long. It was arduous and, uh, you know, campaigned hard for it. I, I, I read all the books, um, you know, all 24 before we shot this. And, uh, you know, with every turn of the page, I uh, became more enamored and um, my desire grew, you know, to do this. So when I finally got that call, I was, I was speechless. I remember, you know, my, my wife, my wife and I were up at our cabin with our kids and I think our kids were out like riding bikes. I, I, I just gotten off the phone and I, I walked in, she's taking a nap, which she does. I mean, almost all the time. It's just, she's more like a bear <laughs> hibernating than she loves naps. And I, I awoke her from her nap, which is a no, no, but um, she thought when I couldn't speak that something terrible had happened to the kids, she, she the kids, uh, uh, she, the kids are okay. <laughs> And she goes, Reacher? <laughs> you know, I couldn't. Um, Reacher said nothing has is, is, is been true for me. I couldn't, I couldn't, I was speechless. Um, so it was, it was quite a process, but, um, you know, I just, uh, it was a dance, you know. Um, I'm glad I had the opportunity to, uh, to, to go in for it. That's amazing. Well, once you signed on, what were your conversations like with the showrunner about, I mean, I mean, you get the role and then you have to do the thing which, you know, it's a, yeah, big too, a whole different way. Yeah. 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 So what were those initial conversations like or about, all right, how are we doing this? What does this look like? You know, what, how does this take maybe differ from the films and the Tom Cruise movies? You know, I mean, we had so many of those conversations, like this was no, you know, getting this role was no, like, it, like just go in and read for it, maybe go in for a quick screen test and then they're going to decide. And then you're going to have these conversations. It was wildly collaborative. I mean, we had we would spend hours, hours together, uh, discussing the scenes, telling stories about my own life. I mean, just getting to know each other, uh, getting to know each other's sensibilities and taste, and um, all those questions honestly were like ironed out before I ever had the role. You know, we understood tonally the show. Uh, you know what what was expected of me, what I could bring to the table. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it was just, uh, it was so collaborative. And then having the role, that just, ca that just carried into the, you know, we, uh, you know, I would get letters from the producers, like, here's how I see Reacher playing this scene. What do you think? And hey, let's get together and rehearse a couple um, on set, you know, let's try it like really funny and let's try it really dark and um, just, you know, just explore this thing together as a team. And, um, you know, I've never had that, that I've, I've collaborated with you. I've never collaborated like that. And, uh, I think it's a testament to the egoless brilliance of the team that I was working with the producers, um, you know, especially Don Granger, who's on set, um, Nick Santor, the showrunner writer, uh, these guys wanted to hear, um, every, from everybody. And, uh, you know, I think, I think the, hopefully the fans, um, you know, are the beneficiary of that and, 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 and enjoy an authentic reacher because everybody, everybody worked hard to, to that end. What about, uh, I know Lee Child is an executive producer on here. Did you get to have some conversations with him and pick his brain? Did I ever? Uh, <laughs> Lee Child, I mean, you know, I mean, just imagine for a moment that you've read uh, all the books available by an author. You've fallen in love with his writing. You see his mind coming to life on the page. Uh, you, you now get to 
to, to bring to life some figment of his imagination that he spent over two decades um, conjuring up and uh, manifesting. And, uh, and now you're going to meet this guy on set. And there's a lot of, a lot of questions when you meet your hero um, who, who, who has a pretty good idea of what he hopes to see in you. Um, am I reacher enough? Am I tall enough? Am I too muscly, not muscly enough? <laughs> like it was just very, a lot of pressure. And I also just really admire the guy. And um, I was, I was starstruck when I saw him, I got out of the, the, the uh, car that I was in and uh, there he was. And I was like, I can't, I was just, again, I was speechless. I was like the idiot back in the cabin. I uh, trying to talk to my, my, uh, my dazed wife. Um, uh, but he, he couldn't have been more gracious and humble and kind. And, um, you know, we hit it off. He's, uh, he's just a, a super fascinating guy. Anybody that reads a book a day is going to be interesting to talk to. He knows a little something about every, everything. And, uh, you know, you, you see that in his book, uh, in his books. And, and it's, I think it's one of the reasons we enjoy him so much. Um, they stoke that curiosity in us, but, um, you know, we, we, we didn't talk much about the role or the, you know, the, the character of the books. We just, you know, I, I, I had a million questions for him and just about who he is and what he's interested in and how he spends his day. And he, he was kind enough to entertain that. <laughs> well, I'm curious, had you seen the Tom Cruise films? Was that something you had to like put away outside your mind or something you actively avoided? I, it was a, it was a decision. I, I hadn't seen him at the time. Um, you know, I, I don't get to see a lot of movies. Um, and it was just, there was just was movies that I missed. And, um, you know, when, when I, when I was involved, I just decided I didn't want to risk picking up any of the choices that he made. Um, yeah. and it would be easy to do because Tom is, um, he's a legend and I grew up watching him. I, I revere his work. I, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I think it would be inevitable that I try and steal something of his cause he's so good. <laughs> um, so I just, yeah, I try, I tried to, to, to avoid that. And, and, uh, like, like I said, a ton of source material to pull from, so I, I can get my questions answered somewhere else. And, uh, that's, that's where I, I, I put my focus. For sure. Well, I mean, the physicality is so central to the role of Jack Reacher, which is hard because especially in the opening of this series, it's just you and your body and like, you don't speak, but right. you have to be Jack Reacher. So how did you approach like from the walk to how he looks at people, all of that stuff? How did you kind of embody that character? Yeah, or was it just good, something you had to- That's a good question. Yeah, out? it's tough. It's tough in the pilot. You want to, you know, you want people to understand everything that they they need to understand to 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 enjoy the 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 film or the show that you're working on um yes the first six and a half minutes uh, reacher doesn't say anything which is you know it's uh that's not a departure from the the reacher that we see in the books and um and there's something fun about that um but how do you how do you show people this very different kind of protagonist um who really blurs the line between good and bad and uh who's got this um uh really incredible intellect and uh, ability to uh, dissect uh, the, the setting that he's in always one step ahead, uh, ahead of everybody. Um, <clears throat> to me, it was about not, uh, I really wanted to avoid the trap of like trying to emote uh, any kind of malice, uh, look intimidating, you know, um, uh, because I think somebody, I mean, we're the same size, you know, I'm, I'm never afraid when I walk in a room, like it was just a confidence you get when you're, you know, usually the biggest guy, um, in, in a, in a space, you know, that you don't need to like act intimidating to do that. Um, but you, when you're one step ahead of everybody, it's kind of fun to like sit back and enjoy, you know, I, I, I work, I, I work with like you know, like a contractor on a house or something. And like, you know, they play all the games that they play and, you know, like you can spot it a mile away and you're like, oh man, this guy's like trying to pull one over on me. And you let them think that they're getting away with it. And you're like, oh, that's interesting until, until you don't. And they're like, uh, and when they're caught, you know, it's like, uh-oh, um, that's Reacher, you know? And um, so it's fun to toy with people sometimes. And, um, you know, he doesn't care what people think about him. So it's um, sometimes he'll let things play out. And that's really how we open. And uh, so to me, it was about enjoying that, you know, just enjoying trying to put the pieces together and, uh, and, and, and figure these people out. There are also a lot of close-ups in the series, which are meant to kind of, you know, underline the size, but I, I understand that provides a unique challenge for you as a performer because the camera is being used in a different way and it is your entire face is filling up the screen. So what was that 
experience like for you? That's a really good have... question. That's a really astute observation. That's um, do you have like a film background or how do you? <laughs> I love movies, uh, but yeah, no, but that, I... that's like a really so so the way that we achieve those shots was uh, unlike anything I've had to deal with. You know, I mean, I've been doing this long enough to you know, and I've directed and um, I know how to help the the camera get what it needs to you know i mean you know depending on the lens size like how wide you can look to make it you know all, all that you know um uh, toma vincent um established that sort of we, we called it the reacher shot and uh he was our our a french auteur this director that came in to, to shoot the pilot and he did a great job but he would in order to achieve that look he would put the camera just a couple inches from my face on a very short lens, you know, which usually shows like the whole, you use it for like an establishing a wide shot or something or see a lot of the scene, but it was here. And it's the hardest thing in the world because, you know, I'm sort of trained uh, not to look at the lens, you yeah. know? I mean, in fact, I always kind of know where it is and know how to avoid it. So you can, you know, like if I'm trying to scan a room, you sort of know, like, I'm gonna look here, I'm gonna skip over that area in space, like it doesn't exist and then, you know, when it's when the whole lens is like right here though there's nowhere to look you're looking down the lens the whole time yeah so i was like toma i can't do this like i can't really, like where he's like just look around the room i'm like but i'm looking the entire room is this lens i can't look anywhere else i don't know how to do this it was uh it was really it was hard um but you know then you watch it and you're like wow it does uh the way that he shot that it's uh it's got this incredible presence you know you feel the size and you kind of it's uh you're kind of in his head a little bit um uh so it's cool it's different and uh it was it was tricky to get that stuff and i couldn't stand it i wanted this camera to like back up <laughs> That's like a fair. foot you know <laughs> well it's also interesting because reacher is this character who comes in with no baggage and it's kind of like the man with no name and yet this first season there's a very personal reason for his mission and you get a really great kind of emotional hook for Jack Reacher here. I was curious what that was like for you to kind of toe that line between this man of mystery a little bit, who then, you know, has this emotional connection to, to what uh, he's working on. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, we've got a similar in, in, in a lot of ways, we've got a similar backstory. You know, I mean, I grew up in the military. My parents were vets. Um, there's something that's uh, sort of sacred about that life. And uh, there's a reverence that I have for the, the service members who uh, dedicate themselves to that calling. And, um, and you know, the, you know, the growing up on military bases, moving around a lot, you know, just um, there's something nostalgic about that for me looking back. So there are emotional ties that I have that I think Reacher and I share um, in, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, but at the heart of this story, we've got somebody who cares about protecting the innocent and seeing justice done. Uh, you know, like all of us, I mean, we just want to live in a world that's fair. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, the judicial system is slow and cumbersome. There's not a lot of ways to see, um, you know, it's, it's like you know, the kind of immediate um, response that we crave, I think, when when we see an injustice done. And that's what Reacher does for us. So it feels good to be able to be like be the arbiter of justice, um, you know, and th to understand why we're doing it with, uh, you know, the, the relationships that he's seeking to um, protect or avenge and, and, and uh, knowing his past and where he comes from, which is very similar to mine. I mean, he's somebody that I that I, I understand. And it's a, it's an honor to play that. Speaking of avenging, you know, the fight sequences are really brutal in this. What was kind of your approach to that? What, what were kind of the challenges involved with, uh, you know, Jack Reacher doesn't do big, long fight scenes. It's very swift and it's done. Right. Yes. It's, uh, you know, elbows like axes, as yeah. it says. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, he's a brutal fighter. It's, uh, it's all over in a second. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to it's tough to fight like that you know i mean you got to know what you're doing uh you know when i work with buster reeves of the, the stunt coordinator on this this he's a he was he's a world champion fighter uh, this is a guy who professionally fought and was one of the best in the world and he, you know so when he demonstrates it it's like i can't do that i didn't do i i'd have to go back to eight years old and start over and incorporate this then to get that to look like you did i don't know how to do it. He's like, you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Just, uh, you know, a, a couple months of, of really deconstructing my fighting style is what it took and, um, and, and, and rebuilding it from scratch to find the kind of like uh, surgical precision that he moves with. Um, I don't, you know, I, I still don't think I'm, I, I move quite as well as some of the professionals that I work with. Um, 
but uh, I do I do think uh, the the fights are very true to the books, and I I can't wait for people to enjoy them. Uh, about to wrap with you, my final question though, you know, season two, is there a book you would love to tackle in the next season? Hopes for you know what to what to go into as the Jack Reacher story continues. Oh, sure. I mean, I've got a lot of, there's a, I got a list of books I want to see made. Um, I should be so lucky. Uh, but, you know, they, I don't think they want to hear from me and my book choices. So <laughs> you I, don't, short. I don't think I have a lot of sway here, but um, you know, one of my favorites is Die Trying. I, I would love to make that at some point. Great. Uh, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time uh, and great work on the show. Thank you so much. I hope we can do this again, man. This is probably the only setting in which this question is appropriate, but when you got the job, did you measure your hands? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I measured them against dinner plates. My okay. wife was like, I just washed that. I just <laughs> emptied the dishwasher. Please stop putting your grubby fingerprints on our plates. And I had, I had to know, I had to know. And yes, they are, you can eat off these. If, the size of dinner plates. Yeah. If you're ever out a plate or two at a Christmas dinner, I'll, I'll come uh, help you out. What about, uh, I know Lee Child is an executive producer on here. Did you get to have some conversations with him and pick his brain? Did I ever? Uh, <laughs> Lee Child, I mean, you know, I mean, just imagine for a moment that you've read uh, all the books available by an author. You've fallen in love with his writing. You see his mind coming to life on the page. Uh, you, you now get to, to, to bring to life some figment of his imagination that he spent over two decades um, conjuring up and uh, manifesting. and uh, and now you're going to meet this guy on set. And there's a lot of, a lot of questions when you meet your hero um, who, who, who has a pretty good idea of what he hopes to see in you. Um, am I reacher enough? Am I tall enough? Am I too muscly, not muscly enough? <laughs> like it was just very, a lot of pressure. And I also just really admire the guy. And um, I was, I was starstruck when I saw him, I got out of the, the, the uh, car that I was in and uh, there he was. And I was like, I can't, I was just, again, I was speechless. I was like the idiot back in the cabin. I'm trying to talk to my my uh, my dazed wife, um, uh, but he he couldn't have been more gracious and humble and kind. And um, you know we hit it off. He's uh, he's just a, a super fascinating guy. Anybody that reads a book a day is going to be interesting to talk to. He knows a little something about every everything, and uh, you know you you see that in his book uh, in his books, and and it's I think it's one of the reasons we enjoy him so much. Um, they stoke that curiosity in us, but. Um, you know, we, we, we didn't talk much about the role or the, you know, the, the character of the books. We just, you know, I, I, I had a million questions for him and just about who he is and what he's interested in and how he spends his day. And he, he was kind enough to entertain that. 